Welcome, everybody, to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, I talk about four different types of freedom, time, financial, location, health, freedom. And I'm always scouring the globe, interviewing entrepreneurs, strategists, doing things on the cutting edge, and sharing those insights with you. So today we have Biot from Los Angeles, and she dubs herself as the growth architect. And briefly about her is she's the growth architect and founder of the Women's Code and provides visionaries and leaders with proven strategies, blueprints, and growth maps that provide clear steps to improve business systems, strengthen leadership skills and teams so that they can broaden and make a greater impact with their business. So today, she's also a podcast host of the Business Growth Architects show. And so today is going to be talking all about entrepreneurship, growing and scaling your business. And I'm happy to welcome uh, Piati to the show. Welcome. Thank you so much, Christopher. I'm excited to be here. Let's do this. I know uh, what's interesting is, um, you know, you have a really interesting background. Tell us your story and how you got started. Yeah. So my story is, as you said, I'm, I'm known as the growth architect. I've been an entrepreneur for a extremely very, very long time. And what my story really sets apart from the other stories, it is, you know, I don't want to say it's a rags to riches story. You know, that would be an exaggeration, but it is, you know, I was a middle class kid. I grew up uh, in Germany and then I just didn't fit in. I had big aspirations and dreams. And and then I moved to the United States. I made some excellent mistakes and went through 13 years of just absolutely brutal adversity fires, floods, riots, earthquake, a lawsuit, September 11th, a tsunami, you name it. I've experienced the um, effects of it and lost my business multiple times over. And then eventually I cracked the code and I got to sell my business to Bill Gates for millions of dollars. And along the way, Christopher, you learn a lot of lessons. You then go, this was so difficult. Somebody has to derive a benefit of this. And that's how I became the growth architect to share the stories and say, look, we can, we can, I can give you an experience share, or I can just tell you what works and what doesn't. Yeah, it's uh, quite interesting. And um, so let me ask you, was, you know, all of that hardship adversity worth it when you sold your uh, company to Microsoft? I, I actually didn't sell, tell, sell it to Microsoft. I sold it to Bill Gates himself. So Bill Gates himself has several companies that he privately owns. And so this was one of them. This is an interesting question because let's say if I were to ask the question to our audience right now, listeners, and say, if I were to tell you that I'm going to put you through just, just, I mean, just not knowing how you're going to pay your rent, uh, nervous breakdown, you know, betrayal, being lied to, stolen from, losing things over and over and over again for 13 years. Mm. But then if you do that, I will tell you that at the end of it, you become a multimillionaire. Would that be worth it to you? I say, Christopher, to me, it was definitely worth it because mm. I feel that I didn't come here to be mediocre. Mm. So the thing that so many people are worried about is the white picket fence. What does it look like to everybody else? I just couldn't help myself. You know, maybe that's like a part in me that is so incredibly strong. And I'm sure some of your listeners will relate to that where you have that internal drive. I mean, and you are not your typical physician either. I mean, you clearly, you know, have a drive that sets you apart from everybody else. I mean, many of your colleagues don't do podcasts. It don't help other people. They're just busy with kind of like keeping their own little thing in place. So what is it about that that makes it that creates that drive, it is the drive. It is something that you decide that you're going to do, that you overcome the fear and you combat the fear with the courage because the fear is always there. Mm -hmm. And then you go and you say, well, I'm, I know I'm here for something more. And then you search for the more until you find the more, and then hopefully you get to share the story. So to me, yes, it was absolutely worth it. That's very fascinating. And, um, you know, I resonate on all those points. I, I, I never fit in. And uh, you like I had I had bigger dreams than whatever system I was in. So, but um, it's quite interesting. So we would talk about um, talking about growth. So you have this three essential framework elements to grow your authority. Um, tell the audience about that. 
Yeah. So, so basically there are three things that I want you to think about that are required for you to, to really get into this area of how do I, how do I get there? The number one is always mindset. You have to have a growth mindset. That is a daily ministry. And I don't know about you, Christopher, but I catch myself and then you do it and then you feel really good. Stuff starts to happen. Then you go, nah, I don't need it anymore. You know, maybe I'll, I lack my daily practice a little bit. And inevitably you get like the rubber band, you know, it snaps you right back to where you were before. So you have to be constantly in this mindset practice of moving yourself constantly saying is like, I can, how do I take vision and make that part of my belief system? How do I not logically explain? Yeah, you know, I know it's possible, but then you don't really believe that, uh, you know, overcome the value mismatch and all these kinds of pieces that are really required to move yourself into a mindset where you not believe, but know that what you want to achieve is possible. Number two, you have to have a strategy because with strategy, you are not going to be able to get there because one of the things is that what I, you know, and, and again, Christopher, you know, I, I, I'm sure you have a lot of the same experience. People come to us and they say, well, and now I'm in the process of figuring this out. And then it's like, okay, what exactly are you figuring out? Well, I'm going to figure out how to get there. Well, what is your strategy to get there? Well, uh, that's never going to work. So you have to have a strategy. And the difference between the strategy that I talk about and the strategy that a lot of internet marketers want you to follow is the way that it's done right now, generally in the market, is that the internet marketers that have 95% of the market share, like all the big lists and speaking from stage and product launch and funnel hacking and digital marketing and whatever it is, right? It's like 95% is owned by what? 15 people that constantly give each other their affiliates, right? So they're burning their lists at a, at, at a space that's just breathtaking. The entire objective of this system is that you, as the person who somehow enters somewhere this circle of insanity, are getting hooked into buying. Because then when you have the funnel, then of course you're going to have to have a product. So you have to go to the person that does the product. Then you have to launch it. So you go to the person that launches the product. Then somebody says, yeah, but you need to speak from stage. Then you need to learn how to speak from stage. Then, you know, so, so they've set it up. That they each of this piece have a have a portion of it, and then they just circle circle you around until you're one hundred fifty thousand dollars out of pocket, and you've taken every course, and you still don't have a strategy. Because what you want to do is you need to have a strategy first, and that is what's the lifestyle I desire? Where do I want to? You know, how far do I want to take this business? What's my business model? And then and only then are you allowed to go and spend money or invest money in any of these programs because then you know which of those plug in to the business model. That saves you the time and money. And the third part is grow. Once you, you know, are in the mindset, you have the strategy, now you have to you have to go after how do I grow this? This is really the business model, you know, where you say, is it a franchising? Is it passive income? Is it, is it, uh, our, uh, is it money for time? Is it, you know, is it an online thing? Is it done, done with you, done for you, a workshop, a subscription service, a membership? There's so many different options. So you're going to have to figure out how do you grow the business? So those are the three essential elements and you can download that white paper on successblueprint.biz if that's something you want to dive into further. Yeah. And um, you have a, so this is really good uh, introduction. I don't have sound. I lost my sound. Hold on one second. That that might, it might actually be me. Yeah. That was a really good um, intro, you know, the free three essential framework elements. And um, you also talk about this uh, five-star success blueprint and expand upon that. 
So the Five Star Success Blueprint is um, our signature growth system. When you build a business, you want to understand what the client transformation is that you offer to your client. I explain it, Christopher, when you go into a big building into downtown, you go in the parking garage, you may be in P4. You take one elevator from P4 to the ground floor. Then there's an elevator that takes you from 1 to 15, another elevator that takes you from 15 to 30, and then there's another elevator that takes you from 31 to the penthouse. So in the client transformation journey that each business owner has to design, you need to think about which elevator are you going to operate. If you're going to operate all of the different elevators, you say, now nah, I'm going to do P4 all the way to the penthouse. You already have four different distinct pieces. So in the Five Star Success Blueprint, we help people that are building businesses to figure out where in their system they are missing something. And so the first step is to your idea. Is your idea clear? Do you know who you're selling to, what it is that you're selling, and what problem you're solving? Number two is the offer, which has to be done after you've done the first step. And in that offer, you now have to create it in such a way that it solves the problem we just uncovered. The third one is then you build your systems because then you need then you know what you need to solve and offer to those clients. Then you build your team that operate the systems, that manage the offer, that solves the problem. And then we finally look at you as a leader and we say, what kind of leader do you need to be to lead the team that manages the systems, that handle the offer, that solves the problem? That's the five-star success blueprint. Um, you also, you talk about, so the, there are so many strategies out there. How do you, which one is the best one and how do you incorporate that as a growth architect? Yes. So this kind of goes back a little bit, Christopher, to what we talked about as a minute ago, is that there are so many different business models out there. So the strategy that you follow is the strategy that has work for you, that has to be aligned with your values, with your mission, with your vision. So a strategy is some people are in it for money. Not really typically who I attract. I, I attract a lot more impact-driven visionaries, thought leaders, people with big, crazy ideas or people that are not really conforming or people that don't fit the mold. What is it that I want to achieve? And then how do I reverse engineer and how to get there? I compare this, you know, strategy finding, like when you go to New York or you go to Paris or London, any of the big cities, and you go in the subway city, you know kind of where you want to go, right? You want to go to the Empire still Building, you want to go to the Champs-Élysées, you want to go to Big Ben. And now you have to find two pieces on this map. You have to find the red dot that says you are here, and then you have to find the place where you want to go to, and then you look and you map out the different paths to go there. So you could take the subway maybe directly, or it's a subway and a bus, or it's a subway and a bus and walking, or it's just the bus if you don't like to be underground, and uh, or you take a taxi. So there's different ways to get there. So the strategy is kind of like the, the, the vehicle that gets you there, and that is determined by literally where you want to go. But most people don't outline where they want to go they just kind of have a vague idea of success, passive income helping people but that's not a destination that's wishful thinking the destination is i'm going to help a thousand physicians this year to increase their income from 200 to 1.5 million dollars that's a goal because then I know how many people I need to reach. I can do all these calculations. But if I say I want to be more successful, that's not a strategy. Or this is um, a great advice for the um, listeners. And, uh, you know, a lot of the segment are um, female entrepreneurs, executives. And, um, you know, you also wrote a book and tell us, tell individuals how they can find that, what it's about, uh, as well as how do people can contact you. Yes, absolutely. So I wrote a book called Happy Woman, Happy World, which really is a lot about women leadership. So I was a single mom immigrant 
and I worked very hard to get myself to this point. So I share all the information and I came up with a concept called ego rhythm and ego rhythm. And this is a concept that it works equally for men and for women, but it, it helps you to get out of this superhuman paradox thinking that we have to somehow be perfect in everything, but I'm sharing how you can find out what rhythm you are in what that actually means, why you need to know that, and how you can influence that to be in a in a rhythm that you might want to be in next. So for example, a lot of people in COVID were in a transition rhythm where they, you know, transitioned out of full-time work into uh, their side hustle or taking their business, uh, you know, or adding something else or realizing that their family is more important, changing their business models, so a lot of people went through a transition. So now what comes after this transition ego rhythm? What is that next rhythm? So I talk about it in the book. You find it at Happy Woman, Happy World, um, or just go to Amazon. It's available as an audiobook, as a printed book, and as an ebook. And you can find me anywhere under Growth Architect or Beata Chalet. To my knowledge, I'm the only person with this name. That makes it relatively easy. You know, reach out. Don't be a stranger. While we're at it, please make sure that wherever you listen to this podcast, go and give Christopher a five-star review and tell him one thing you're taking away from this segment and share this episode with one other person who needs to hear what we were talking about um, and as well as subscribe to his podcast. Thank you. And for all the uh, listeners out there, let's uh, thank um, Beate for providing valuable insight, wisdom, and guidance. And be sure to check out her podcast, Business Growth Architect Show, as well as her books and her website, which will be on the, well, all the resources will be in the links and show notes. And she's on all the major platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And with that, thanks so much for coming onto the podcast. It's been my pleasure.